Good morning, and thank you for tuning in to The Morning Show for Tuesday, January 31st, 2023. My name is Sean Tierney, and as always, we'll start off with what's new in industrial automation. And uh, here we're looking at the first article today. This is a blog post over at Rockwell Automation's website. And here they're talking about um, how they can partner with you in the semiconductor area. And um, there is a little fluff in here, especially at the beginning of the article. But I did want to say a lot of people don't know this, but if you're using or, or um, a distributor for Rockwell or work for Rockwell or you're a, a Rockwell integrator, we actually, I was a small part of a large team that uh, helped some very large semiconductor manufacturers in the Albany, New York area. Now, a lot of people don't realize that there are some massive facilities in the Albany, New York region. So um, if you're in an area and you're like, nobody here has experience with semiconductors, contact your fellow, uh, you know, integrators, OEMs, or Rockwell people, distributors up in the Albany, New York area, because they have a lot of experience because they had some really large plants come in maybe 10, 15 years ago. So, uh, and I was lucky just to be a very small part of the team who worked on that. So uh, I just know that they've done some great stuff up there. And with that, our next article is from Aviva. And they're talking about their manufacturing execution systems in this article. And there's a link towards the bottom of this article, which goes to a white paper, which I thought was really good. And um, in my past, I had to get all trained up on uh, MES. I had to do the whole S95 thing, learn all about it. And uh, I got to use uh, products like uh, Plant Metrics when it first came over to Rockwell. And I uh, loved that product. It was so awesome. Really enjoyed that kind of stuff. And so MES is, for anybody who does SCADA, MES is really not a huge jump. It really ties in everything you're doing in the PLC, HMI, and SCADA and takes it to the next level with your OEE and your, you know, your um, KPIs and whatnot. So here, I thought what was interesting about this article from Aviva was that they, had, they have a solution which helps you aggregate multiple plants, MES systems into a central location so that you can have those plants reporting in and you can have information about every plant at a central location. So if you need to decide on where you're going to spend some dollars, or if you need to tweak each plant's numbers, because maybe this plant has older equipment and it only can get to this level of efficiency, where this is a brand new plant and it has brand new equipment and it can get to a much higher level of efficiency, you can do the apples to apples uh, comparisons by tweaking their input in. And again, if you have to allocate resources, maybe two plants are very similar, but one needs um, more resources to get up to the right level of uh, efficiency, you can do that as well. So I just thought it was a very interesting concept and I wanted to share that with you this morning. Um, next up, we have a couple articles from SME and um, the first is about multi-access opportunities. Now, this is talking about mostly uh, tooling and uh, there's you know robotics and whatnot, but um, I really thought it was an interesting, especially if you're you're interested in either of those subjects. I thought it was a very well done article talking about going from five axes to six axes to seven axes and so on. So um, I wanted to share that with you. And then this other one is how to mitigate burnout in manufacturing. Now, burnout can be a problem in any career, in any job, right? We all know that. And it's been exasperated with the great resignation. You know, people saying, hey, I was working because I enjoyed it. But, you know, with everything going on, I'm just going to retire now. Um, and so a lot of times the people who are left have to pick up an additional workload. And it's, and I like to tell people, it's like, if you drive your car always at hundred miles per hour and never change the oil, eventually your engine is going to blow up. It's just a matter of science, right? And the same thing here, you just can't ask your people to work 60 hours a week for infinity and expect them to be happy and to be healthy, right? So um, I thought this was a very good article. I really would like them to see them take this article and go even deeper into it because, you know, they talk about different things. They talk about millennials um, having a higher level of burnout or concern of burnout than everybody else. But of course, they're younger. They don't have as much experience. So they haven't been through as many ups and down uh, economic cycles. So I don't know if that stat really correlates to, you know, just the fact that they're not just younger, right? But in any case, um, I thought it was a very good article and I wanted to share it with you. And next up, we have our product spotlight today. And today I'm spotlighting my Logix book of knowledge for on sale for $10. Um, this is all of my Control Logix articles that I've wrote over at theautomationblog.com since I launched it back 10 years ago. And uh, I put them all together. I updated them, I edited them. In many cases, I added all new pictures. And I've, it's all on sale now for $10 at 
theautomationblog.com. This is a lifetime copy, so if you accidentally delete the PDF, you can go up there and download it again. There's no, no uh, limitations on um, you know timeouts that you won't be able to download the PDF. It's an ebook. We do have it on um, Kindle, but there's a problem proofreading it and getting updates, so I don't push that as much. Plus, they keep 70, 80% of this profit right now. So, um, But if you are an avid Kindle person, you will find it up there as well. Um, but here you'll find, at today's link, you'll find every article I have in it. And, um, you know, and I start really from the beginner's basics. What is a PAC? What does Rockwell offer for PACs? And then at the end, I cover all the versions and what I thought was interesting and new in all the different versions and all the different shows I attended. So that is today's product spotlight. Now, from there, I want to go over to new manuals. And uh, this is what I like to call my publication crawl or pub crawl, where I go to all the different uh, major vendor sites and we're adding every week, we're adding new vendors to check out. Um, and this really, really uh, caught my eye this morning over at Rockwell site. It's the drives in common bus configuration uh, document, right? And uh, this has always been something that if you're in an application that needs a common bus setup with multiple VFDs, this is something that you're really going to want to have on your hard drive. And I just wanted to highlight here all the different VFDs from Rockwell that are in this document. So we're not just talking like the super heavy duty ones. We're talking everything down all the way down to the, uh, the 40P and the 520 series. So um, definitely something if you ever needed to uh, put your drives in a common bus uh, configuration, this uh, manual is for you. Up next is a new catalog from Monocon on the Monocon TM5 series. This is both standard and safe um, IP20 IO, and it just looks really cool. And uh, this is a brand new catalog, so this is pretty extensive. It covers well everything you need to know about this line. I just thought it, you know, if you're using Monocon, you may want to go up there and grab this brand new catalog because it has all the controllers in there, it has all the IO in there, and everything you're going to need to know about this product. There's also another new document from um, Schneider, and this is about their EZRG. I don't know if I'm saying that right. T300. Apparently, this is an RTU. It's specifically made for certain industries like utilities. And I was reading through this. It just seemed really cool. So if this is something you use or you think about using, you may want to grab this new catalog. And we had one more document come through, and this is a new brochure for their rugged micro data centers. Now, I've, I've actually been looking at these for our new building because we're going to have an ESXi server in there so that we don't have to load VMware images on all the different student computers. They'll, you'll just have generic laptops or computers that will connect to the ESI server so the VMware image, whether we're teaching Rockwell or Siemens or somebody else, Schneider, that uh, they'll be using the images hosted on the ESXi server. And so I was actually looking at these, and uh, so I was surprised to see that um, Schneider actually makes these for rugged environments. And I believe NEMA 12 and maybe even higher, but they are vented. You can get different sizes. They have mini ones and they have big ones, but uh, this was a new brochure on their site. So I wanted to share that with you. Um, next up is a new manual about the ultrasonic test transmitter from Rosemont. So I wanted to share that. If you use this, this I know it says August, but it just showed up today. So in the last 24 hours, so I wanted to share that with you as well as a new manual uh, from Delta Tau on their Power PMAC NC software. So I've never used it. I don't know much about it, but it was new, and I hadn't seen anything on Delta Tau in a long time, so I wanted to share that with you. And now we go into our audio and video file section. And so today, I didn't see any new uh, recordings that I want to share with you. There's a couple I do have to watch to see if they're good for the show. But um, I did want to share with you, I've actually taken the time last night to strip out some of the videos from our morning shows like the tech tips and the Q and a and release them as separate videos and separate blog posts. And so when it comes to the, uh, the tech tip we did, I'm calling this uh, I've rebooted tech tips. and I'm calling this episode one. This was the one where I walked you through how to get RS logics, micro links and emulate 500 for free. So now the announcement I'm making here is that this is now available at the automationblog.com and other places we post our videos as a separate you know, excerpt from the morning show. The other thing I did, because um, in this video, I didn't go through and actually click the download button. Um, I actually went through and I updated the article I copied from the previous article I'd written, pasted it in here and completely updated the procedure. So if you're somewhere where you can't listen to a video, maybe you don't have headphones, you're in an office, I got every step documented here 
on how to go through and do that completely updated for 2023. And I wanted to share that with you as well. So with that, uh, the next uh, video file I want to share is kind of along the same lines. This is now its own separate video, the Q&A we had from uh, January 25th about the panel view and another automation tech tip, automation tech tip 002. Now this is video only, but this is where I went through and I showed you how to, you know, if you're an electrician technician or even an engineer who's never touched a PLC, how you can use the free RS logics and emulate to actually create a program and test it. And uh, we do this in, I think we do this in under 10 minutes. We actually do this under six minutes. That's pretty impressive. So um, there's no article with this. I have written these articles previously, but I just wanted to split that video out. So anybody who says, hey, you want to learn Slick 500s, PLC 5s, MicroLogics, check out this free software. This is a, a video, a tech tip that will show you how to get up to speed and start using it. And of course, you know, I have a, a, a whole course on using RS Logics Micro. It starts at $25, goes all the way up to $100, and it comes with full support. So if you're using it, you're stuck, you're like, well, maybe I should take the course. You can grab that over at the Automation School. And if you have any questions, I answer them. There's hundreds of questions already on the course. You can read all the Q&A that I've had over the last several years with every student. So you may your questions may already be answered in the Q&A we've had previously. And um, now on to our event today. We have an event, a new event this Friday from Amron. Now we talked about their new G3 RV uh, slim relays and, and we also talked about how they're very fast relays as well. And uh, they're actually having a webinar on it on this Friday. Now I actually had to shoot them off a message this morning because you know, when you go to click on it to find out more, right? It uh, wants you to create an account. I created an account. I tried being impressed. I tried being a customer. It wouldn't let me see details about the event. So um, you may have to talk to your local distributor to find out more, but um, I have sent them a note saying, hey, I'm trying to promote your webinar and I can't see any details about it. So, um, but in any case, if you were interested in those relays, you may want to check out this, uh, this event. With that said, um, today's Q&A comes from a community member who just received a machine. Now they went and looked at this used machine at the dealer, right? They tested it all out, everything worked great. When they got it, the panel view booted up and said, hey, I can't find the MER runtime file, right? And so he's like, hey, what happened? What, what causes this? Is the other files corrupt? So I went through with him. I said, look, most likely um, just the card came loose, whether it's a USB stick or a compact flash card, SD, SD card, probably just came loose in shipping, right? So hopefully they didn't pull the USB stick out and keep it for themselves and send you a machine without a file. That would be bad. That would be mean, right? So in any case, and probably illegal. In any case, I said, um, you know, first thing is, Look at the back of the panel view and see, is there a card? Is there a USB stick that maybe came loose in shipping? Maybe it fell into the panel somewhere. That's your first thing. Now, the second thing could happen is, depending on when you plug the card, like if you had a compact flash card and a USB stick in at the same time, memory tells me if you plug them in, depending on which one you plug in first, will depend on what number they get, right? So is it storage card one, storage card two, storage card whatever, right? So that's another thing to be concerned with because they may have plugged in the USB and ran it from there. And then when it shut off and booted up, it found the compact flash card first and then the USB second. So the numbers changed. But in reality, especially if it's an original Panel View Plus, you should not be running the program off the external memory, right? Whether it's a flash card, SD card, or USB stick. Now, they do say the Panel View Plus 6 you can run from the external card. Same with the Panel View Plus 7. But what I did is I linked them to this article here. This is an article and a video that will show you how to load and set an MER file, a runtime file, as the default application that starts up every time you boot the system. Um, I show, I walk you through exactly how to do this, both for the PNV Plus 6 and 7. And um, you can see the videos down here at the bottom of the article. Now, he may have to copy the project uh, from his external device I also included those links as well. I have videos and articles on how to copy files off of external or really copy them from the external memory to the internal memory so you don't have to worry about that card coming loose. And then you'd run through this, this process. So that's today's Q community Q&A. And uh, I'm hoping to hear back from him that everything went smoothly and he's all set. So with that, I want to go over to our community, automation.locals.com. I want to thank everybody who signed up. We're well over a thousand people now. This is a fairly new community. We just started promoting 
And I uh, really want to thank everybody who signed up. We also have uh, many supporters who are spending just uh, equal to uh, the value of one cup of coffee every month to be part of the community, to ask questions, to answer questions. You can even send me messages directly here. Um, I prefer it if you post the question publicly, if you can, because if somebody comes with the same question, they'll see the answer already there, right? And I can link to it. If you just send it to me, then it's not public, then nobody can benefit from our Q&A. But in any case, that is our community. And uh, from there, I just want to remind you, if you think I missed a news item that uh, you saw in the news over the last 24 hours, please feel free to share them with us. The only requirement here is that uh, you use a real email address. That's how we filter out spam. But you can tell us you want to remain anonymous. Say, I don't want to be credited, and uh, we won't mention your name. We also have sponsorships. So if, you, if, you're, if you're talking to your favorite vendor, tell them to sponsor our show, our podcast, our blog, because that'll help us do more. We got open positions we want to hire for. We got a new building we want to we want to uh, sign on. So um, that we're actually looking for. But we definitely want to uh, contract with a new building so we can have people in, have live classes and all that. And to do all of that, we're going to need sponsors, right? So tell your favorite vendor they should be sponsoring our show. Look, I I look at all of the Twitter Twitter feeds from these vendors. I look at their uh, YouTube uh, channels and I look at their um, podcast numbers. And the vast majority of industrial automation vendors have just a tiny fraction. They're getting maybe two, 300 listens on their podcast. They may have a thousand subscribers or 500 subscribers on YouTube. You know, maybe they have, uh, you know, um, very few people looking at their blog articles, right? Or, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we can help get the word out. We can really help them reach their audiences by promoting what they're doing, you know, the exciting stuff they're doing. And they can help us bring you more free updates, more free articles, how to do this, you know, product updates and whatnot. So it's really a great relationship. We're looking for more, more sponsors. And we want to thank all the folks who have already sponsored us. Really, really appreciate that. And with that... That brings us to birthdays. Now, if today is your birthday, I want to wish you a very happy birthday. Hope you have a great day today. Now, if you connected with me on LinkedIn and you put the birthday in your profile, your birthday will show up in my list. And I want to wish my connections a very happy birthday today, including Kartik, Dale, Ali, Bob, Samuel, Mark, Emma Hussein, Everett, Arthur, and that's it for today. So. Have a very happy birthday, Connections. I hope you have a very awesome day. I'll be sending you happy birthday messages in a little while. And uh, if I did mispronounce your uh, name this morning, I apologize. But uh, I do want to wish you a very happy birthday. And from birthdays, we go over to the Automate.News uh, website. This is where we just post just the raw links to everything we cover every single day. This usually gets updated right before I film the episode, you know, between 9 and 10 in the morning. And uh, then the article between 10 and 11 and 12 usually gets done as the video is rendering. It takes a while to render the video. And so these are some of the open positions we have. So we're definitely looking for new sponsors so we can fill some of these positions because then we can uh, multitask, right? If, uh, the more people we have, the more multitasking we can do. So in any case, I did want to share that with you and remind you of the site. Every link I've talked about today, all the different sites and everything we talked about in the show is all right here. And with that, we've come to an end of another episode of the Automation Morning Show. I want to thank you very much for watching. It was a wild month trying to produce an episode every single weekday morning. And we did it. Mission accomplished. And we look forward to doing it every single workday for the rest of the year, except when I'm out um, traveling uh, at trade shows and whatnot. we got uh, three trade shows we're going to try to do this year. So we'll have more on that in the future. But uh, in any case, I want to wish you all a very happy, safe, and healthy week. And until next time, my friends, peace.